At Right On Replicas, we take pride in providing you with the best scale model reviews on the planet. This review covers Monogram's Green Hornet Kit, and it has been considered one of the earliest mass production injected molded kits available. It came out back in the 1950s, and it's still being reissued from time to time in its original box art and instructions. The kit comes as PC-61 and has 76 parts molded in green, chrome, black, and clear. There's water slide decals and an instruction sheets, but they are the old style with just photos of the actual build. The quality of the decals have improved over the years, but they still look great on this show rod. Uh, they float easily and set quickly, and they have good color registry. Normally, though, I like to use some setting solution to help them conform to features on the model. I found uh, the setting solutions from micro scale industries to be the most compatible with different manufacturers of decals. We'll start this build with the frame by attaching the radiator to the frame rails. Paint this the, your choice of body color. I used a Ford Electric Green for this kit. Then add the roll bar and support in place in the D shaped holes in the frame rails. On the left side you add the steering column. Now assemble the motor block and paint that and the flash shield the color of the motor. I chose to use the body color there and the starter was painted black, the belt was painted flat black with aluminum pulleys and I used a 50-50 wash of flat black and solvent to add a black wash to the valve covers to fill in the valleys and highlight it. Now you can see the motor is taking shape and you can install the heads with the valve covers. Now add the intakes, assemble the blower and add that, and then add the carbs and the flash shield, then install the belt. Now put the motor into place by attaching the pins on the frame rails and inserting the steering column pin into the bell housing. Because the motor is so exposed, I wanted to add some detail, so I'll add a pre-wired distributor and coil for this build. There's a lot of different brands on the market and you can make some at home. Um, but using a, a wiring diagram from the internet, you can wire the motor by drilling out the hole for the shaft and installing it with some super glue. Then you drill out the locations on the heads for the spark plugs. Cut a small part of black wire for the boots and slide it onto each wire. Then match the wires up to the diagram and cut to fit. Slide each wire into place with the boot at the hole to make sure it looks correct. And then super glue all the wires into place. Add the coil to the center wire and cut it to fit sitting on the motor. As you can see, it adds a really nice finishing touch, especially with the blower intake there. Now let's assemble the drivetrain by adding the rear plate, then assemble the axle. Now install the axle into the drivetrain with the holes towards the front. Install the completed rear drivetrain with the transmission hole on the top and attach the transmission to the motor and the axle to the frame ends. The drivetrain should be centered in the frame rails. Now gather the parts to add the radiator, front suspension, and headlights. Now add the grill to the radiator and install the front suspension parts. Add the shocks to the frame and the suspension and add the radius rods to the shock mounts and the frame pins. Then install the headlights. Next we'll be adding the tie rod and the front suspension drag link. Glue the drag link into place from the suspension to the pin on the frame. Here are the radius rods for the rear suspension. Glue the rear radius rods onto the axle and frame. Pull together the parts for the interior and paint the seat flat black. Install the fuel cell and pressure pump. Add the seats to the supports on the roll bar and install the steering wheel in place on the steering column. Add the shifter in the transmission. Now we can prepare the body parts for painting. On the fenders, clean off any sprue and mold marks that need to be filled in or blemishes, and then attach the front and rear fenders to the fender well plates. On the body, add the trunk to the tub and add the firewall. Then clean any mold lines you find there and fill or smooth any parting lines as needed. The roof is a loose part that can be added later or left off as an optional item. Now you can wet sand all of the parts with some fine grit sandpaper and then wash them off. 
Now spray the parts with a coat of primer that's compatible with your finish paint. Make sure to look for any parting lines or blemishes after it dries and fix them or remove them prior to your final coats. Once they're completed, you can finally sand the body with a light or fine grit sandpaper and then wash and let it air dry. I painted this car with some automotive metallic green paint. It came out pretty well. The decals for this kit are pretty great. They're really nice flames. But I used some Microset and Microsol to help them conform and stick to the body. I painted the dash plate body color as well. Now add a drop of black paint to the instrument nacelles and use a sharpie to uh, trim them out in silver and a white gel pen to add a little uh, instrument panel gauge detail there to the centers. Install the dash plate onto the firewall and paint the pedals black with some silver trim and install those also. Note that the tires are smaller in the front than in the back. The tires are two part plastic units so glue them together. Once that's dried there's a parting line you'll find in the middle of the tread and since these are slicks anyway you can use a sheet of sandpaper to sand the tread off and give the tires a worn look as well. This will hide the parting line and enhance the finish of the tire. Now add the hub cap to the outside of the tire and paint the inner rim body color and install it on the inside of the tire. I used a set of Vinyl Nation tire white wall stickers that are not included in this kit uh, to give this car a little different look. They're available on the internet. At the front fenders, slide the fender over the axle and line up the pin and glue it into place. Then snap the tire onto the axle. Do both sides the same way. On the rear fenders, slide the fenders over the rear axle and snap the tire into place on the axle. This is the assembly so far with the final chassis shot from the bottom. Here you can see the side view of the rolling chassis. Now we pull together all the parts to assemble the body. Install the glass into the windshield frame with some white glue and then attach the frame to the body. You can attach the up top if you want to use it. I painted mine a cream white flat. Then add the bumper and taillights and paint the taillights a transparent red. Now simply spread the body at the base a little bit and slide it into place on the chassis. I made a custom plate for my model by printing out my logo on a color printer and covering it with a piece of clear cellophane tape. Then I cut it out and added the tag to the license plate area in the back of the vehicle. Here's the back side of the car and as you can see it turned out pretty well too. Like I said earlier, these old kit designs are still being reissued but they're still old kit designs. They come with challenges. The parts don't always fit just right and the instructions are pretty vague. But if you use this step-by-step -step procedure you should be able to come up with a really nice looking show car for your shelf. Overall, I'd give it about a 6 if I were to rate it. It's great for nostalgia, but I wouldn't start with it as my first model. We hope you liked our review and you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel. But we're also on Facebook and we have a website at www.rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.